Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a look at the economy, ship pricing and physicalized infantries. This is a summary of Calling All Devs, the economy of spaceships and there's a tiny dog on the table. Ships in the economy. So eventually the economy will be dynamic and ship prices will vary. Alpha 3.3 had Teacher's Ship Shop and 3.3.5 had New Deal for ship purchasing. They are working out what sorts of times they want it to take to earn particular ships and items. They don't necessarily look at the costs in UEC, but they look at like a shield generator of this quality and caliber should take maybe three hours to earn. But obviously UEC is factored in there because they didn't then have to price them. These are extremely rough averages as player skill and loadouts will be different though as will be the missions that they take. At the moment, due to Alpha UEC and Alpha UEC purchases being regularly reset, it causes some balancing issues. Some players think that prices are too high for ships, others think they are too low because they want ships to be harder to obtain in game when the final sort of like product is ready. The prices we have in game as of 3.3.7 are what they envision the sort of starting prices to be when the game sort of like gets that full persistence. It's balancing for the future. There are a lot more building blocks to the economy coming and they wanted to aim for what the game is going to be. They're looking at ways to mitigate these values, these higher potentially unobtainable values for some players in the short term so that players will more easily be able to obtain and earn those ships without too much toil and then have a reset. One of the ways that they might solve this is potentially having money earned uh, be accelerated, missions giving more reward. Danton is meant to be eventually a low risk, low reward system, and they are aware that rewards currently don't really make obtaining ships very viable without having a cargo hauler or a miner going off and doing those sort of tasks to earn a lot of money. I just want to say that I find that explanation a little hard to swallow when basically they're saying, oh, we want the price of ships to be the final price, but we don't want the, the rewards for missions to be the final ones. It's just a lot of Sort of like, it didn't make much sense. They need to balance, in my opinion, for the game now, if it's a really easy fix to do that. So in the short term, you could just reduce the value of the ships. There are few UC prices, boom. And then have it in the patch notes. These ships are several times cheaper than they would be in the actual final game or whatever to reflect the three month cycles. That is just one value per ship. Surely, now, maybe I don't understand it. Maybe, the, maybe there's something more going on there with the economy, admittedly. However, they did go on to say that they rely heavily on player feedback for the economy. How does it feel? What is the actual performance like and the experience like for players? They want players to find out and uh, sort of explore some of the economy themselves and work out what works and what doesn't. There's people that have made apps and those apps and um, sort of like um, details that players have collected on the economy that we can see online, like from Texas Skulls and stuff. Some of them are very accurate and apparently some of them are not so accurate. Uh, when costing out a ship, they take into account performance of the ship and the items that go into it. Better performing ships will typically be more expensive. How many hard points or ports or seats, cargo space, weapons, um, how well is the ship doing? These are all calculated and used to come up with a value of that ship. They get this value and then they add the cost of materials that went into building the ship. Now, for something like the Phoenix or 890 Jump, that's going to be quite an expensive amount because the cost of materials for those ships is inflated because of their luxury nature. Drake ships might be cheaper. So the individual materials will be priced for each item and then all the materials that went into that item and all the sort of like procedures that went into it as well. So this could also be the facilities used to create that item. Are they relatively limited? Is there a waiting time? The manufacturing time, the amount of labor, the hull of the ship is just an item as well, I suppose. They could break down every finished ship into the value of the raw materials, the labor, and then the processes used to convert those materials into the items and ship hull. And we know eventually that those materials will have dynamic prices based on the simulated economy and player interaction with them. So the value of iron might go up at some points, value of uh, steel that's been manufactured, the people bringing in various ores and that sort of stuff. There's going to be missions for that, but also 
sometimes the values of materials will be very low and then item prices that use those materials will be significantly lower because of that and ship prices might um, go down because of that but if the uh, cost of some basic materials for building ship hulls and some of the more basic um, items that are stock with a ship go up then you will see prices of ships rise because of that physicalized inventories were also talked about they're moving on to just what your character has on them as their inventory so items and armors and and extra guns and that sort of stuff will have to be stored in places and not just magic bag of holding on your character where you have all your guns and all your armor sets ship storage and lockers um, as well as um, lockers and places to store stuff in your habs will be some of the places that you need to go to to switch your gear in and out global persistence which is tied together with server streaming and meshing are being looked at at the moment sections of the universe and systems that are not being used will be saved and then streamed out and then to be streamed back in later when they're needed by the server or the client or whatever this means if you leave an item at an outpost, so I don't know, a bobblehead, bam, in an outpost, it would persist there until someone, you know, picks it up uh, or you go back and move it or whatever. They are working on the tech for those features now, including the code behind persistent lockers, characters, carrying items, putting them away, all of that stuff that is needed for physicalized persistent inventories. These are all building blocks towards one of the major pillars in game, which is full persistence, which will have everything tracked and should mean that we potentially don't get uh, as many database resets anymore or not so often, or maybe they will even switch onto UEC at that time rather than alpha UEC once they have full persistence, which is a way off, admittedly. Physicalized inventories, however, are planned for alpha 3.6 coming in June 2019. Please tell me what your opinions are on the current ship pricing and the answers given here. Do you feel that they should tweak the ship prices a bit more so they are obtainable? Or do you think they're doing the right thing by having these values pushed towards their intended long-term values and then have missions and rentals to allow for access to ships? Now, why was there a tiny dog on the table? Whatever you think, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. We will be giving away another Sabre Raven with a CitizenCon digital goodies pack. All you need to do is be subscribed to my channel and comment on any of my videos in December to be in for a chance of winning. And some other giveaways may appear and some other stuff uh, along the month, but I will inform you when that happens. If you are considering getting or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or any other game for that matter, instead consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It's a subscription-based service that leverages your internet connection to turn any appropriate device, whether it be an old PC, smartphone, tablet, and more into a powerful Windows 10 gaming PC. It's been working well in the latest 3.3.0 PTU batch of Star Citizen. I'm gonna try and maintain a best practices guide on my website as well. More information is available in the links below, and if you do decide to try it, use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.